Hey, how's it going, everybody? My name is Greg Brown from Foundry, and today we've got an awesome presentation for you about a VR game that used Modo during its production. Gadgetbot created this game called Kydro, The Awakening, and today we have Robert Simons and Peggy Chung, the two creators of the game. Absolutely amazing, awesome game. Can't wait to hear how you guys used Modo along with it, and I want to hear a little bit more about your walk mechanics, because they're yeah. incredible. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, guys. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Bit of applause. <laughs> uh, first off, I want to say thank you to the Foundry for inviting us here today. Um, as you just heard, my name is Robert Simons. And I'm Peggy Chung, and we're the co-founders and directors here at Gadgetbot. Yeah. Um, so what we want to talk about today is our game, Kydro the Awakening, which is a mech-based uh, story combat game for virtual reality, um, and also story uh, storytelling and world building within virtual reality. Um, first off, we wanted to give you a little bit of background on us. Um, Peggy and I have been, uh, we opened our company back in 2011 uh, to both create our own intellectual properties, but to also uh, supply uh, concept art to the entertainment world for both Activision uh, and film studios. Um, so you're going to see an example here of a lot of the projects that we've worked on over the last several years. Um, and a lot of this has contributed to our storytelling and world building uh, for working with these clients. Um, so this is just a small example of some of the people we've worked for for the last few years. Uh, but what I want to get into is our intellectual property creation. Um, and so for the last several years, Peggy and I have created three different properties that you see here. Um, the first one we want to get into is Momentum. So Momentum is a hover racing uh, film that we created. And all of this was to help Peggy and I learn about cinema and learn about how to create uh, 3D and also real props at the same time in a one space. Um, so we spent several years uh, building real props for this, building helmets, building suits, building cockpits, um, and just learning the overall process and also building our story out. Uh, in our overall world for momentum until eventually we made it to the 3D side of things and we used Moto for all of our vehicles that we constructed and we used Nuke for all of our compositing throughout momentum. Um, and this was a huge learning curve for us. We worked with a company called uh, uh, Goma and we worked with another company uh, called Shift uh, from our friend Mark to really flush out this world. Let's see. And so like working through momentum gave us the ability to learn more about story. So the next project that we started was a short film about VR. So it's about these two people that meet in VR in this uh, kind of like an ultimate think, uh, date. Think of it as a eHarmony or a OkCupid. Okay and so they match you up based on your social media and you play through game levels together. And it's kind of like a co-op. So you see how well you do together. If you don't do well, you find another player to play with. Yeah. Um, and again, another example of what we went through in order to make this. We flew out our crew to Oregon, uh, shot out in the deserts and in the, the forests they had out there in order to really establish a look for this world. For the final piece you see here, everything you see here was done in Modo and Nuke. Uh, we built all the assets you see, we rendered them all in Modo, and then went directly into Nuke and composited everything. So all of this has been helping Peggy and I learn how to tell our stories uh, in these uh, cinema uh, worlds that we have been building, but a lot of this is also transferring over to our virtual reality sense. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we're dealing with character arcs, story arcs, storytelling, all of that comes together for virtual reality. So what we want to give you a small taste of right now is both a cinematic of our game Kydro uh, and a short game trailer of what we've constructed so far for a demo. Um, so I will let the game say itself. are the last hope for humanity. Cool. Um, so that's the cinematic that we broke down for Kydro. Um, so Kydro follows the story of an orphan girl named Ava, who's about 14. Uh, and she's going through her first day in combat training within the academy that she lives in. And so what you just saw was sort of the overall arc of her life. What we're about to see next is her first day in training in this world. And this is our game trailer. Hello there, Cadet Ava. Oh, please stay put as I explain to you all of the amazingness. Hi! be your humble bouncer robot, Bob Unit 0027, but you can call me Bob. Welcome to the Observation Deck 02. Here we will teach you meat-like bodies how to pilot our bipedal robots in the outside world. Okay, let's 
Let's do this. for you. But don't worry, I will hold your hand through the whole thing. Music's a little long in that last part. Okay, so um, for, oh, let me go back on that one. So uh, first off, to get it to look that good in virtual reality is really difficult. Uh, it took a lot of optimization to get it there. But what we wanted to hit on was everything you saw early on with us talking about storytelling and the world led us to where we're at right now with uh, Kydro, with what we just built. And so it was really taking that cinematic universe and that same storytelling that we've been used to and bringing that to this now 360 virtual world and still trying to lead people's eye without having to use a box. Mm -hmm. yes. So uh, this next part you see here is, uh, again, getting into the story and the world building and what connection it, uh, what uh, Kydro is. So everything you see here are the individual characters that play out through the entire story. Each character has their own narrative and has their own uh, importance in this world that's playing out. Um, but you as Ava are the orange lines you see leading throughout this whole thing. And you will never see most of these characters. You probably won't see 80% of them. But you will hear about them in the news and from people within the world about what's happening, like the way we really do in real life. You hear about things on CNN. You hear things about things on Fox. You hear about things from individual friends and people. Uh, that's the same thing we want in this world, because virtuality is, is taking a step forward in terms of it's not just this two-day uh, thing on the screen anymore. You are literally inside of a theme park now. And so everything revolves around you, and all these characters revolve around you, and they have an importance. So going off of the story, we, so we spent about a good three months like working through the story uh, over multiple times. And then we get into the concept art phases. Like, how, what does this world look like? We've been talking about it, but what does it look like? And so in this world, they have, uh, the orphans are put into these gladiatorial battles. So in this academy, there's multiple teams. And so this is just one of the teams called Iron Fox. And it's a three versus three. So we have it where the middle one is the uh, guardian class. And then we have the left of the titan class. And on the right, we have the scout class. And in the next image, you'll see a, an example of a different team, a team with more money. And so what they, they have still have the three, three main chassis, the same body designs, but different armor that's on top. Um, finally, with this part, uh, this is just to help push the story forward. So the reason why all of these uh, teenagers do these gladiator uh, battles is eventually, once they hit 18, they're going to become a part of the military. And once they're a part of the military, they'll play as the soldiers see on the left, and they'll end up commanding uh, up to 30 or so robots on the battlefield. But that's just for, that's just for the story itself. Uh, the game will actually never get to this point. The game revolves around the core story of Ava and what her purpose is in this world. It's more than just this massive war that's going on. Um, and again, it's just exploring more of this world. These are called the contractors. They used to be affiliated with the companies in the union cities that we were showing you in the cinematics. Uh, they uh, broke away hundreds of years ago and built this massive vehicle that now roams this waste-torn uh, world. And they go around collecting uh, resources and parts in order to sell back. Um, and again, exploring more of these cities and unions. Uh, this is just another design for a union that you would live in as a character. Um, and then finally, this is our main union. This is the one that our story revolves around. It's called the Union of Arms. This is where the academy lives and takes place where all the kids go to. Like, think of it like Hogwarts and Harry Potter, uh, if you ever watch those stories or listen to them. Uh, kids from all different unions come here in order to learn how to pilot these mechs. And this is where Ava will learn about what her purpose is in this world. Um, and I'll let Peggy continue from here. This is more about character development. Yeah, and so you saw that Robert was really, th all that concept art was world building. It's trying to give this kind of a bed, a place for all of us to play in. So now we can dive into characters. And so, for example, we have this character named Bob. And the idea behind him is that they were, there, there are multiple Bob units, almost like minions. And so if you need one for medical, you have like a Dr. Bob. If you need one for 
cooking, there's a chef Bob. And in our one, we have it's, it's more like a uh, professor Bob. And so the idea behind him is that on the storytelling side, you know, you have these robots that look kind of scary, intimidating to be around kids. And so our idea was like, okay, well, I'm going to make the face like an emoji face. So it's a little more friendly with kids. But overall, it's, a, it's still like a really heavy duty unit. And so um, this is a little bit more on the development side. Um, when we start working with our team, communication is the biggest thing, right? Everybody getting on the same page. It's like you could tell somebody like, oh, I want this and that, but you don't know until you see it on paper. So an example is the last sketches you saw, they're very loose, they're very loose. And so to hand it off to a 3D artist, it slows them down because it's not clear. And so what we do a lot in our project is that we front load things. So we'll do the concept art, spend more time on the concept art if it means that the 3D team can move faster. So you see here, we did a very clear line drawing. So now there's not that many questions when we hand it off to the 3D artists. They can just run with it. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely cheaper in the long run, too, because if you spend more time at the end of production trying to clean up your 3D models or add more to them, it's just going to get taxi and heavy on everybody. Um, and again, just exploring more ideations of what these combat droids could be like or the mechs that you're piloting. So we needed an under chassis before we actually got to the armored version. That way characters could build their own mechs like you saw in the gameplay trailer. Um, and so this is where Moto really came in ha uh, handy. We built out the mech you see on, in the, on the left entirely in Moto. I built it really dirty at first, just heavy poly to figure out the shapes and forms. And then we reduced, reduced, reduced until we got to about four about 14,000 tries or so uh, when it went into the game. It was pretty light. Uh, and then on the right is just an armor paint over in Photoshop to figure out like what do the different armor types look like. And then also communicating the world story, too, the battle damage that exists on these things, uh, the wear and tear from being outside of these worlds. Um, just really trying to bring your level of realism to everything inside of this very stylized world. Um, and now the importance of storyboards. So. Doing this, like no matter what, we're dealing with a 360 world, but we need a point of reference as we move forward. We need to know exactly what's going to happen, when it's going to happen. And so Peggy and I storyboarded everything from uh, beginning to end, and also laid out our game mechanics and our story uh, choices throughout this whole thing. Um, so you can see where the mech comes down, things like that. This is all important for our entire team. Peggy and I could do this, hand off to them, step away, and our team knew exactly what Peggy and I wanted. And then they would continue to add on top of this, mm -hmm. continue to add better mechanics, better gameplay to this entire thing. Yeah, I mean, an, an example is like, of course, it's, it's great for artists to be able to see this, but it's also great for the programmers to see it. As you can see, we have something like the color palette popping up. This is good for us to kind of make a list off of. or like, hey, we, we need something where we can color the robots. What can that be like? And so this was like a great guide for us to follow, everybody to follow. And so it was kind of like a work in progress, uh, uh, work in progress script slash storyboard that all of us can kind of contribute to and go back and forth on. Yeah, um, I mean, again, hearkening back to that idea that, uh, and I'm not sure if I brought this up earlier, but for a rule for Peggy and I is that concept art is king. Um, you need to lay down all your information very uh, at the very beginning of the process so you're not making it up for it later on. So Peggy and I spent a long time with one of our concept artists flushing this entire area out, getting all the details down. That way we could hand it off to our 3D modelers and they could kick ass. Um, so what you're going to see here is a first rough out pass that the, our 3D modelers did just to get kind of a scale and uh, proper proportions down for the scene before we moved on to the final scene that you're about to see. Okay, got a list of stuff to do. Gotta do them, because I'm a robot. Some people tell me what to do. I'm a slave. But you know what's fine? It's fine. Yeah, I have kids. I have kids all the time. I have to do everything around. Oh, hey, hey, hello there! <laughs> Whoa, I didn't see you. Welcome to the command room, cadet! Um, little fun fact, I don't know if any of you have seen a show called Invader Zim, uh, but my brother did the voice of a, a character in there called Gurr. He did the voice for the robot that you see throughout the show, uh, or throughout the game. Yeah. Um, so this screenshot you see is a final render from the game, in-game render. Um, and I just want to go back and forth between the two real quick. This is the concept art piece. And then this is the final render. Obviously, the render looks a little better since it's in the scene, but it has all the details and everything that we planned in that concept art shot and made the production a lot easier as we move forward. A lot of these assets you see too, like the balls here and the arms, were all built in Moto uh, and then brought into Unreal directly. Yeah, an example is, you know, if we don't have a clear concept, that really slowed us down. And this is an example of it. We actually didn't even finish this painting. What happened was, uh, this is the room right before the command room, the orange room that you saw. Um, this one wasn't really thought out. The storytelling wasn't really there. And that, that's the snag we ran into. And we're like, okay, let's just revamp this. Let's, let's kick this out. And so we even got to the point where we built a little rough model of it. Um, what we did end up keeping, though, is you'll see on the left side, there's a classroom. 
And so that makes sense. Okay, that's the storytelling side. The right side, there's a medical bay because these kids might get sick, and that's, that's very common. And so what we did was in the middle, we didn't really have a purpose. There was no purpose in that middle room. And so we went backwards and we're like, okay, let's, let's take a step back and figure out what can be fun for interaction side and for the storytelling side. And so you see in the next image, we went into back to the concept phase. And so with this, I built out, I did a little sketch and then went to Moto and I built it out. I built out the space and then painted on top of it. Um, and it was all based off the concept of, hey, what's interesting about this world we see we're, we drive these robots, but we never got to see it up close. And so we decided, hey, let's make it like a little uh, mech garage. We'll make it into like a mech garage. So a chassis will drop down, and there's two armors that pop up on the left and the right, and you drop armor onto it and customize the color and customize if it's a more heavy armor based or more weapon based. And so this gave us a way to have like players to be more invested in the character. Now you're like, okay, I customize this guy, I get to drive him later. And I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I mean, and to heart, uh, go back on to story again, like we wanted to get a fun gameplay mechanic going here so that people could build their own robots and take that onto the battlefield and destroy some other robots. Um, but one thing we really wanted to play back on is that you are inside of an academy. So while you're there building things, you'll realize that on the left side, there's a bunch of kids that are learning about how these robots are built and how they're being constructed. While on the right side, that medical bay we were talking about is playing out and you see kids that were sick from the balls when they were inside of those things or whatever was happening to them. Um, and so it just helps add to the realism factor that you are literally inside of this academy. And so as you see, uh, similar to, again, the command room, the orange room that you saw, that because of the strong uh, concept that we had, we were able to translate it over back into the actual final in the Unreal project. Um, and again, like all these parts were built in Moto and yeah. going back and forth on that. Um, and that's... I mean, that's pretty much it for us today. What we want to leave you with is how important, it, how important it is for your story or your storytelling to come through in virtual reality. Um, and, and there's no right way of handling virtual reality right now still. It's still a very open world and a wild west. So handle it however you want. Uh, just make sure that you can have a strong basis for people to be connected to while they're in those spaces. Mm -hmm. um, that's all I have today. If you have any questions for us, uh, feel free to come over to the side and ask away. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, guys.